Yo, what up, how's it going? And welcome back. In today's video, we will be talking about all of the units in TFT set 6.5. Um, so all the new units and the old units, I'll be breaking them down, telling you what each unit does and what their role within the team composition is supposed to be. So whether that is tank, DPS, support, or a hybrid of those things. Again, with patch cycles, sometimes units do things that they're not supposed to do. Um, but that is an anomaly. For example, LeBlanc in set five being a carry for a couple patches when she's really supposed to be utility. So just take some of those roles with a grain of salt, but that is what they're supposed to do. And that's what, what they will do for the majority of the set. What this video is not, this video is not me telling you best in slot, um, although I will talk to you about items, but best in slot changes without pa with patches. So pointless information. Um, and I will not be building team compositions for you or talking too much about traits and uh, traits and augments as those will be topics for other videos and videos that I've already made. All right, this video is best served for a beginner or someone who just needs a refresher or didn't have time to play PBE and just wants a head start going to 6.5. With that out of the way, the whole intro, let's get into it. All right, guys, don't fret. The first unit I'm gonna start out with is Brand and I'm going to do all of the new units first if for the returning players, um, but I will be doing every single unit, of course. So let's get our boy Brand in here. Brand is a debonair and Arcanist. Those are his traits. Again, uh, if you wanna know more about traits, make sure to watch that video instead of this one. Okay, Brand, what does he do? He fires a little fireball. So he fires a fireball. He has a DPS, he deals AP, and he fires a fireball at his target. So he is locked into hitting frontline. So he fires a fireball, sets him ablaze, deals some magic damage, and um, if he fires another fireball and he hits them again, it will stun them the next time it hits them if they are still alive. And he prioritizes enemies that are ablaze, and enemies are ablaze after hit by his fireball. Uh, now, if you don't know about Debonair, Debonair, you can be VIP, which is similar to Chosen in Set 4. Again, I won't be talking about that too much in this video, but um, if he is the VIP of your team, the VIP of your Debonair, then he will fire a second fireball with his first fireball. Um, so he'll fire two fireballs, and if there's already an enemy ablaze, his second fireball will still prioritize um, ablaze units. So um, yeah, so he fires two fireballs and the second fireball will always hit a different enemy than his first one. But if there's already another enemy that's ablaze, it'll prioritize that over other enemies. That makes sense. Uh, so it goes, it'll be around his target as well. Won't, won't go crazy off the board. Anyways, that's brand guys. Very simple, simple unit. Okay, J4. J4 is a tank. Oh, I didn't talk about itemization. Uh, sorry, that's the first one. So let's talk about some itemization. So what are some items that are going to be good on brand? You know, normally I kind of shit on the recommended items that Mobilitics kind of puts on here. I, I don't know how they get these recommended items for the most part, but these ones aren't too bad. Um, his best item is going to be blue buff if you want to carry him. Uh, I, I can't imagine that ever being different. So uh, blue buff is going to be probably his best item. And then after that, it's just AP damage amp. So um, death cap, death cap, JG, stuff like that are going to be good on him. Um, and also giant slayer is going to be pretty good on him because he is locked at hitting frontline. I could see Gunblade being fine, but you know, whatever. Uh, anyways, just use your best judgment when you're doing that. Build him AP and his mana item is blue buff uh, for sure. Okay, Jarvan the fourth. Jarvan the fourth is a tank. He doesn't have any damage amp on his abilities, uh, but he technically scales with AD because he is a striker, but he is a hex tech and a striker. Uh, very good in the hex tech and striker composition. So what does he do? He drops his flag down, which is E from League of Legends. He drops his flag down and all of his allies near him, it's a pretty small radius, like one to two hexes. Um, all of his allies in that radius gain attack speed uh, for the duration that his flag is down. That's what he does, pretty simple. J4 is typically a unit you don't itemize, but if you do itemize them, you just put tank items on them um, or like, you know, you could put like lockets on them, stuff like that. Just, you know, you put leftover items on them. You don't plan to itemize Jarvan the fourth unless there's like some weird uh, Jarvan comp out there. But, you know, for the most part, um, he's not like a main tank or anything, just a decent tank, has some good utility, that sort of thing. Okay, uh, Nocturne. Let's talk about our boy Nocturne. I like Nocturne. He's a fun unit. So he's a Hextech and an Assassin. Uh, so he is a DPS and a utility unit. So he does deal some decent damage, but primarily he's going to be more of a supportive type unit. But I could see patches where um, he is like, you know, overtuned or something like that. And he's pretty good carry or maybe a good off carry, something like that. I've played him a lot as an off carry. So what does he do? Um, he... Fears a single target and that deals AP damage, but he is an assassin, so he deals a decent amount of AD damage. So you can build him hybrid. Uh, now, again, Nocturne is more of a supporting style unit, so I don't imagine you'll be itemizing him that much, but I guarantee there will be patches where he is strong. And so good items on him are going to be crit amp because he is an assassin. So uh, any type of crit amp, like Infinity Edge, is going to be his best item for damage, of course. And then after that, 
probably some items that like uh, probably some items that keep him safe like uh qss like rfc um gunblade that sort of thing he's very similar he reminds me a lot of talon and how he does damage over time and he kind of deals mixed damage but he deals a lot less damage than talon uh so if you guys know how to play talon you can build him pretty similar to talon if you want to itemize him as a dps he does function very similarly um cool ash let's talk about our girl ash so ash is a syndicate and a sniper ash is probably one of my favorite tft units of all time this iteration of ash is is uh unique from the older ones but not as cool as you know set four ash but you know this ash is kind of cool so what is ash she is a syndicate she is a sniper okay what does she do she has a dps and a support unit uh, because she does have support element to her build and slots in very well with Jin uh, for a lot of boards. So he, she mostly will function as a support unit unless you plan to play her as like a reroll build um, and carry her, but she can fulfill both roles pretty well. So what does she do? She fires an AD volley. So it's her W from League of Legends where she, if you don't know what it does, it fires a big um, AOE cone in front of her, pretty big, and, uh, and, and it hits all the targets dealing AD damage and also debuffs um, anybody she hits, she debuffs their attack speed uh, for a certain duration. She is locked at hitting frontline, so uh, so just know that. So items that are going to be good on her if you actually want to itemize her as a carry. You know, I can imagine like a Rage Blade being pretty good. I would not build these items. <laughs> to, but uh, like I, I can imagine some mana gen and stuff like that could be good, like a Rage Blade or a Sojin could be fine. But overall, you really just need ways to kill frontline. So if you're itemizing her as carry, you need ways to kill frontline. So you probably want to build Shred and AD damage amp on her as the things you want to prioritize. Because again, she is locked at hitting frontline. So if she's a carry and you're versus bodyguard, you don't have any Shred. Well, good luck. Um, so yeah, if you want to play her as carry, plan to build Shred. Um, AD amp, and then I could see a world where like mana gen is pretty decent on her as well, like a Sojin um, or a Gwinsu's. Um, I, I would imagine Gwinsu's is probably her best mana gen item considering she does uh, attack damage. So, because um, she can get value off of her autos. All right, we're talking about the Corkster now. We have Corky. By the way, if you keep seeing me peek at my other monitor, that's my notes for this video. I'll leave the notes in the pinned comment below if you guys want to check that out. Um, if you need more information. So uh, what does Corky do? Corky is a Yordle. He has a twin shot. Um, he is a DPS. That is all he does. And um, and he is AP, which is pretty weird for a twin shot. And there's multiple AP twin shots. So it's interesting. Um, so what does he do? He files a single rocket. It is his ultimate from League of Legends. It's a very small rocket. He fires a single rocket at his target. Um, he does not get a big one like he does in League. It doesn't like every third one's a, a, a bigger rocket that deals more damage. Doesn't really work like that. Kind of makes me sad. Uh, but yeah, he just fires an, an ability power rocket at his target. That's all he does. <laughs> That's all he does. But he is pretty locked at hitting frontline again. Um, so he's pretty locked at hitting frontline. Uh, so some good items on him. <sighs> you know, he can probably, he probably uses Sojin okay. But like Sojin and Blue Buff, if you want to build a mana gen item, Sojin and Blue Buff are about equal on him. I think his mana is like 40 or 50. Definitely if you have six Yordle, you want to build Blue Buff, not Sojin. Um, so if you want to build a mana gen item, that's fine. But overall, he just needs AP amp, like Death Cap, Jeweled Gauntlet, that sort of thing. I think Jeweled Gauntlet probably be a very strong item because he will deal some decent AD damage because he will have Twin Shot, right? So it will be auto attacking quite a bit. I could see Rage Wade being very strong as a mana amp item as he does have Twin Shot, so he can scale it up pretty pretty well and then also since he is locked at hitting frontline something like a giant slayer is going to be very good on him as well as building um a static shiv for maybe a supporting unit or maybe for corky or building a um a ionic spark for your frontline because again corky is locked at hitting frontline so you want to get through that frontline as quick as possible because he will deal quite a bit of damage to the backline units okay cool we are on rexi rexi might be one of my favorite new units i love rexi rexi is so fun like a combination of a bunch of past iterations of trundle but in a way that is easier for them to balance i think um cool so what is rexi rexi is a mutant a bruiser and a striker she kind of does it all oh baby rexi anyway she's a dps primarily a dps um and she's also a tank because she is a frontliner has really good stats she does scale very well uh, throughout a fight and does become very tanky but um when i say she's like a tank she's more of an off tank i would not ever plan to primary tank my rexi um for the most part you know i would never plan on that doesn't mean that she can't primary tank but i would never plan to primary tank a rexi um she's either a, either gonna be your dps or she's gonna be a synergy bot for your team um so what does she do she does a lot so um she deals attack damage and what she does is she leeches resists 
off of her target. So she bites down on him. I think it's her I think it's her E from League of Legends. Uh, I, I can't remember. But she bites down on them. Uh, and uh, it's a single target at her target. And whenever she bites down on him, down on them, she heals uh, for a little bit, and she also steals a portion of their magic resist and their armor. So it's better to put her in front of really, really tanky units. So very similar to Trundle and past sets if you played her. Um, yeah, so that's what she does. She heals a little bit and leeches a resist. Very good, very good at like disrupting super tanks and then kind of like making herself into a super tank as the fight goes on. Now for once, Mobile Wittix actually has some decent items here. So uh, she's going to be very good with scaling items. So something like a Titans is going to be very good on here. Bloodthirster, although she heals a little bit, Bloodthirster is going to keep her very healthy. And Bloodthirster uh, scales really well on bruisers because it does give you a shield based off of your maximum HP. Very strong. Um, and then her third item is really just whatever. So these are going to be really, really good on her. These, these two items, I can just guarantee these are going to be good most of the set. But after that, um, stuff like QSS is going to be strong. Uh, Runans is strong. Uh, you know, Infinity Edge in the, in the right circumstances is strong. Or just maybe more copies of these items are going to be strong. But um, yeah, for the most part, these are going to be the types of items you want to build. Some stacking items. Maybe you want to build some tanky items on her. Um, and, and some sustained items. Doesn't really need a lot of damage amp. As she does scale really well throughout the fight. Rage Blade, another very good item as well. Anyways, that's Rek'Sai. I love Rek'Sai. One of my favorite champs um, in the new set. Cool. Sejuani. Uh, this is just a reprint from set five. Yeah, set five, I believe. Um, so Sejuani is a hex deck bruiser and enforcer. Um, very good tags, a uh, very good glue unit uh, for a lot of your compositions. As she does have three different tags. Very, very, very solid unit. So uh, she has a tank. And so what, what she does is she stuns her target uh, for a small duration, whoever she's attacking. And after she does that, she gains a bunch of resist. That's all she does. Um, very good primary tank. So you just put a bunch of tank items on her. If you're playing like a hex deck board or you're playing like a reroll bruiser or something, you're playing a Rex board, very good uh, primary tank in that situation or a good primary tank for the early game. Uh, very, very good unit, but very simple unit, of course. Okay, here we are. We have Syndra. This is also another reprint from set five. They have a lot of reprint from set five, um, which is interesting because set five is the worst set ever. Uh, but uh, they had a lot of cool units, I guess. I do like Syndra. So what is Syndra? Syndra is a debonair and a scholar. She's also one of those ones going to be very good. Um, not a glue unit because she only has two traits, but very good unit that can fit into a lot of different builds, of course, because um, she she's really good. So she's primarily a supportive unit, but also as a DPS. She deals quite a bit of damage and they're 100% are going to be Syndra carry builds um, on certain patches, stuff like that, like a Syndra Talon duo carry. That is the very first game I played of set 6.5 and first place that match. Um, is I played a Syndra carry game, but she is primarily a supportive unit. She does some really good stuff. So she is AP. And so what she does is she flings the closest target. So she picks them up and, and they're, they're, they can't do anything while they're picked up. She picks up the closest target and flings it to the furthest target. And she stuns the target that she picked up first. So the target that she picked up will be stunned when they land. Um, and, and it's great. It's great for throwing away assassins, that sort of thing. So she's really great to just put in next to your carry. But also, again, you can play her as a carry as she does deal damage. Um, cool. Uh, also, just to keep it, keep uh, keep in mind, if they are a Colossus unit or if they have a QSS, she will not be able to pick them up. Um, but she will still deal damage to that unit. So um, QSSs and Colossus units are big counters to her as a carry. That's why she functions a little bit better as a utility unit instead of a primary carry. Um, cool. If she is the VIP, then she will deal an AOE knockup. Uh, so whenever she throws her unit, the unit that she throws, let's say they're stunned for three seconds. Um, I don't remember what her actual numbers are. They change all the time. Um, so if she throws her unit, that unit will be stunned, but all the units around them for three seconds, but all the units around the target that she threw when it lands, all those units around the landing target. Uh, will be knocked up for like half the duration. So like one and a half seconds. So you get another uh, more CC out of it. So pretty good, pretty good VIP bonus. I really like playing her as VIP uh, in like my reroll carry comps. Uh, cool. What do we got next? We got Nar. We got the Nar dog. Where is he? Where's Nar? There he is. Nar is, uh, okay. Before I say what, he, see, say what he does, he is a synergy bot. Um, but I could tell, but that doesn't mean he's bad. It's just, he look, look at his traits. He's a socialite. He's a Yordle. He's a striker. Um, just a really good glue unit. Very good synergy bot. Uh, this, this unit is, and I'm surprised he's a socialite. Cause that, that's kind of crazy to have a socialite. That's also a Yordle. I don't know. That's kind of crazy to me, isn't it? Uh, anyways, uh, Nar is a DPS and a tank. 
Um, I can't really tell which role he fulfills better, but right now it feels like he fulfills the DPS role a little bit better. But again, most of the time you're just gonna be playing him as a synergy bot unless you are actively trying to carry him. So what does he do? Um, he is attack damage based and he, he goes mega. So once he ults, once he gains his mana, he goes into his mega form, which is a melee form uh, of Gnar. So he, has, he is ranged right here, but he goes into a melee form. Um, you will primarily want to like put him on the back line or the front line. Um, cool. Uh, you know, his position's kind of weird. So anyways, what does he do once he turns mega? He flings a rock at his furthest target within his range. Whatever that means. I don't know what his range is. It doesn't really describe past that, but he throws it pretty far. Um, anyways, uh, so he throws a rock and it deals uh, AOE attack damage to everyone it hits. That's what he does. Uh, that's not. So you either want to position on front line or, uh, or or whatever. His position is kind of weird because you want him to cast early, but um, he does have some strange positions because he is like kind of a tank, but like not. He's like mostly a DPS. He's weird. Nars is kind of weird. Let me just say that. Uh, but he is a very good glue unit. Glue. Okay. Uh, Lucian. Lucian. Lucian is a Hexec and a Twin Shot. He is a AP DPS. What does Lucian do? He dashes away from the enemies. And he does his twin shot that he does in uh, in League, his passive from League. But instead of it dealing attack damage, it's going to deal AP damage this set. So he's going to dash and then go pew pew. Um, and the amount of targets kind of scales, amount of targets and damage scales with his star level. Uh, that's pretty much it with Lucian. I, I just realized I didn't talk about itemization for Gnar, but itemization for Gnar is just going to be damage amp, 80 damage amp. Um, that's about it. Um, anyways, let's talk about Lucian. What are some good items to play on Lucian? Uh, these items are probably fine. Like a Rage Blade Shiv, he's gonna be a good Shiv user. Gonna be a good Rage Blade user. Uh, he does deal some hybrid damage as he is a twin shot, so like a Hand of Justice could be good on him, of course. Um, but mostly he's gonna want to have AP damage amp, like Death Cap, like JG. I really like playing JG on him as he does deal some AD damage, right? So Jeweled Gauntlet is is pretty fine on him. Um, Giant Slayer is very good because he is hitting front line and then uh, getting that shred like Static Shiv stuff like that. It, whether it's on him or on a supportive unit, it's going to be pretty good. So, in synopsis, Rage Blade, Shiv, Hodge, Jeweled Gauntlet, uh, Blue Buff is fine, Rage Blade, Giant Slayer, Death Cap, you know, Edge of Night will be good too. You know, it's just good solid utility um, thing. I just realized I didn't talk about Syndra's items, so let me double back real quick. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, double back a little bit. Syndra. AP, mana amp. There you go. That's actually the items you're supposed to do. Um, maybe not all crit amp, but just AP plus mana. AP, AP amp plus uh, mana gen. Anyways, cool. That is Lucian Morgana. Morgana, Morgana, Morgana. Morgana. Okay, Morgana is our first god unit. There's only two god units, but she does it all. She's AP. Uh, she's AP. She deals damage. She uh, has utility. And she functions as a frontliner. She is just a god unit. She does everything. I love her. I love Morgana. Anyway, so what does Morgana do? Morgana is AP. So what she does is she sends out her soul shackles. I believe it's two hex range, uh, but that'll change with balance, obviously. She throws out her soul shackles around her and hits every target that's within her range, dealing some magic damage to them over a certain duration. Um, so after, after a certain duration, once a spell is done casting, she will stun all of, all of the people hit by her soul shackles um, and will deal additional damage to them. Uh, that's what Morgana does. Also, when she casts, she gets a big shield. A shield scales with AP as well, and also scales with Enchanter. She is an Enchanter and a Syndicate. So, what are some good itemizations for her? Actually has some decent itemization here for Mobilitics. Uh, tanky items, plus a Morello. Very, very, very good. Very. Uh, she's actually a pretty decent solo frontliner, uh, especially mid-game. Late game, you typically need some more frontliners with her, but uh, very decent... Um, Solo frontliner. Think of her the same way you thought of Lissandra. She functions a little bit different, but is is basically about the same. Um, so yeah, tanky items. Um, Marilla is gonna be fine. Uh, giant. If you end up building her as like your DPS, you know, you could build something like a Giant Slayer, Death Cap, Edge of Night. You know, so you can frontline her still, but she, uh, she you can frontline her to get the maximum effect of her spell, but also and deal tons of damage, but also um you know, Diagro with the Edge of Night. So, um, yeah, so I, I would say Morello plus tanky items or Edge of Night gonna be best and gonna be her best items for most of the set. Um, but also, yeah, you could build her AP, um, you know, if it makes sense. I have, I have ran some legitimate AP um, Morgana carry games uh, 
so far already. So cool. Senna, Senna, very cool unit. Senna is the Tarek of this set. So if you guys played last set, just think of her as, as Tarek, but she deals attack damage, so it's kind of weird. She's kind of like a DPS, it's strange, but she functions extremely similar to Tarek. She's a socialite and an enchanter. Even her ability, even though it sounds and looks different, actually functions very similar to Tarek, so check it out. She's primarily a supportive unit, but also can be a DPS. I've played some DPS Senna games to not feel very good, but I'm sure there'll be patches where it does feel good. Um, anyways, so she is attack damage based. She fires a beam at her target, man, it's her Q from League of Legends, um, and it goes through her target and then goes goes across the entire board. So it hits the entire board in the direction that she's shooting, um, just in that in that in that line. It's a, like a line shot, you know what I mean? Um, so she fires a beam at her target and she heals, and it deals attack damage. She heals her lowest health ally for each unit hit. So a portion of her damage will be converted into health for just one target. So her lowest health ally. So it's just like Tarek. That's why she said, that's why I said she functions very similar to Tarek, although she is attack damage based. Um, so mana, if you want to, like typically you won't really itemize her very much, right? But if you do want to play her as a carry, um, any type of mana amp, her best mana amp items for sure are going to be Spear of Sojin or Gwensu's. Those are definitely going to be your best mana amp items. If I had to pick one, I would say Gwensu's. Then after that, um, attack damage amp is going to be very good. Um, Death Blade is probably her best damage item as her heal does scale with her attack or total attack damage. And you will be playing for three star if you play her as a carry. So probably Death Blade. Um, but any type of AD amp like Giant Slayer, Crit, um, that sort of thing. QSS is going to be a good item. Edge of Night is going to be fine on her. Um, that sort of thing. Those will all be fine. Cool. That's Senna. Trend, trend to win. What does Trendomir do? Okay, Trendomir is a reskin from set 4.5, but they dropped down his cost to a three cost. So he's, I, I thought he was like a toxic unit at a four cost. He was so broken um, and so unfun to play against, but at a three cost, he's a lot easier to play around. Um, so what does Trendomir do? He is a Chemtech, he is a challenger, he's a DPS and he deals attack damage. So what does he do? He spins, once he casts, he spins to a clump and you just position him like a frontliner, of course. Um, he is he is he has a DPS, but you position him on frontline or, or second row, something like that. Um, so he does spin towards the biggest group of units. And then after he does that, he has three empowered autos. Um, so his next few autos are will deal some bonus attack damage. That's what Trinomir does. Very simple unit. Um, so what are some good items on him? I would not necessarily recommend these items, but uh good items are gonna be QSS. Um and Infinity Edge is going to be a very good item. Death Blade is going to be a very good item. Giant Slayer, any type of AD amp is going to be good. And I don't necessarily, he doesn't necessarily need Shred, like, you know, it's suggesting right here because he does spin to backline, um, but you can get stuck on frontline. So Shred isn't bad. Uh, also, other good items are going to be items like Titans, Bloodthirster, so Sustain, RFC is okay. Uh, Edge of Night is going to be very good for you. But so essentially, you just itemize him as an AD carry. Um, but do be mindful that he is going to be melee ranged and he is going to be uh, hitting front line sometimes. So that can be a consideration whenever building him. But yeah, Trinomir, pretty simple unit. Okay, Ari. Ari is a very cool unit, very unique, very different from any iteration of Ari. Um, or she's a little similar to a, a super old version of Ari, but this one's way better. Okay, anyways, so what does Ari do? She is a Syndicate, she is an Arcanist, and she is a AP DPS. What does she do? She throws her Orb, which is her Q from League. It's a line skill shot, if you don't know what it is. Um, it's a line ability that she throws in front of her at her target. And each time she casts her ability, she fires an additional Orb. So first one, she'll fire one, next one, two, and then so on and so forth. Um, cool. If her orb has already hit an enemy, if she hits them again with her orb, they will take 80% damage in, damage increase. So that I think that also counts because she throws her orb and it comes back to her. Um, it counts on the on the boomerang effect. So if you throw out one orb and it hits the frontliner, then hits the backline, when it comes back, when it hits the frontliner again, it will deal increased damage to them. Um, and this also would apply to uh, further cast of her ability. So. She is a unit that needs a lot of stall and she scales throughout the fight AP. Um, cool. Her best AP, her best mana gen item, mana gen is going to be very good on here. It's probably going to be blue buff. She is 50 mana. So at the time we make this video. So that means she can use blue buff and sojin both pretty well, but blue buff slightly better for the most part. She gets her first cast really fast. And then the subsequent cast, casts um, are slightly faster on sojin, but you know, getting that first cast off very important. 
So uh, blue buff or Sojin plus um, AP amp. So death cap, Archangel, um, IE, JG, you know, that's fine. Um, Gunblade gonna be very good to sustain your team out. You know, you could even go to QSS on here, but you know, probably it's going to be mana amp plus two damage is probably gonna be her best build uh, for most of the set. But yeah, things like Archangel and stuff like that, definitely gonna be good items, mana amp, AP amp, that sort of thing. And I could see sometimes when Gunblade would be a pretty decent item on her for sure. Okay, um, Alistair, we got Alistair up next. Let's talk about Alistair. Alistair is a Hextech and he is a Colossus. What does Alistair do? Very simple unit. Alistair is a tank. Um, and if you guys play League of Legends, he performs his head bolt, headbutt pulverize. If you don't play League, he dashes forward and then he will slam in the ground towards the biggest clump of enemies. That's what he'll do. Um, and so it stuns them and knocks them up and stuns them. And then he taunts and then he taunts them, which will make all of them start auto attacking him. So it can be really helpful for like de for assassins or like, um, you know, just, just tanking, you know, just tanking. That's what he does. Really simple. Um, very good unit. Um, and you just build tank items on him. As you can see right here, tank items. That's what you build on him. Don't really need to talk about a tank much more. That's all he does. Okay. Draven, Draven, Draven. Okay, um, Draven, I got to talk about a little bit longer than the other ones because he's a little bit unique. So uh, Draven is a DPS and he deals attack damage. So what does he do? Okay, oh, he's also a debonair and a challenger, of course. Um, so what does he do? Draven empowers his auto by making a spinning axe, super similar, exactly how it works in League. He throws his spinning axe at somebody, hits them, and he can, have, he can hold two spinning axes at the same time. Um, and it will deal increased damage scaling with his AD. So it's just how he deals all of his damage. He just empowers his autos. Of course, that's how he works. Um, but he does have to catch his axes. You'll see an indicator um, whenever, he, th whenever he, he throws his axe and he hits him, the indicator will be on the hex he's already standing on is where the axe is gonna come back to and he needs to catch it or he'll drop his axe and need to recast his ability for a new, for a new axe. So um, every, every auto that he throws with that hand will, uh, will lose attack damage if you don't catch it, okay? So if you don't have VIP, on Draven, he has three hex range. So it's very good to second row or even frontline him in situations if you do not have VIP. That is like how you would play Draven in past sets. And that's how you would still play Draven. Now, if you didn't have VIP and you would you'd put like, you know, a BT or a um or an edge of night to protect him from getting one shot. Uh, but you would frontline him so he can actually get his damage off. Because if he's constantly dropping axes, he deals, he he tickles the enemy team. Okay. So if he is VIP though, he gains infinite range. So he gains 10 range, which is the whole board. So you can just leave him on the back line. He never moves. He just sits there and auto attacks and never moves. Um, he also gains armor shred. Draven has always been a unit that felt hard to balance and hard to play because it always feels like he needs five items because you need armor shred, you need armor shred, you need sustain, <laughs> you need armor shred, you need sustain, you need damage amp, and you need an RFC. So he feels like he needs at least four items all the time. Um, so, so it is very important that you VIP him most of the time. But again, if you have to play him non-VIP, then you'd want to probably play him second, third, or first row and make sure he has a defensive item on him. So what are some good itemizations for Draven? Uh, good itemizations are going to be crit. It's probably going to be his best stuff. He is stuck at hitting frontline most of the time. So his best items, honestly, are for most of the set is going to be crit. It's going to be infinity edge. Um, it's going to be Infinity Edge, and if you don't have VIP, you probably need a Last Whisper or a Giant Slayer, but I imagine what his best build is probably going to be is going to be a combination of these items, whether it's going to be Infinity, e Infinity Edge, Runans, Giant Slayer, BT, um, BT, and Edge of Night are going to be, and I could see a patch where maybe Deathblade's okay, but it'll be any combination of those items are going to be really, really strong on him, and then, yeah, if you don't have VIP, you can build RFC, but like, if you don't have VIP, you should probably not plan to play Draven. You should only play Draven non-VIP if you get stuck playing it. You know what I mean? Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get stuck and there's no step bro to help you out. And you just need to, uh, you just need to uh, build build what your, build your items, man. You do whatever you need to do to get it done. All right, next one we're going to talk about is Irelia. Irelia. So Irelia is a scrap and she is a striker. Very cool unit. This is a reprint from set three from Cybernetic Irelia. Okay, what does Irelia do? She is a DPS. She is an AD. She's DPS AD. And uh, wait, I was reading the wrong one, but that is what she does. Uh, and so what she does is she dashes at her target, dealing attack damage. So she dashes to her target, whoever she's attacking. 
Um, if she kills that unit, she will reset and will dash to the lowest health target on, on the board, like lowest health enemy on the board. Um, and she will continue the reset. She continues to kill. Very fun and cool unit. Can pop off very hard sometimes. So some good items on her is going to be AD amp, obviously. You'll position her like a frontliner, like a frontliner or a frontline DPS. So front, front row or second row, of course. Um, so damage amp, like uh, Infinity Edge, Death Blade, Giant Slayer. Those things are all going to be very good on her. Um, she probably needs some type of shred uh, or sometimes she needs some shred. It just really depends. But, you know, building shred on her won't be a bad idea, like a Last Whisper, like a Giant Slayer, something like that. And then healing is going to be pretty decent on her um, because she is kind of like getting in the mix, going to be taking a lot of damage. So uh, things like Edge of Night, you know, to Diagro, things like Hodge, things like Bloodthirster is going to uh, help you out quite a bit whenever you are, um, whenever you're fighting. So again, items you want to build on her, Damage Amp, uh, Damage Amp, and a little bit of Sustain or Tankiness and a little bit of shred are going to be kind of her best bet for the most of the set. Be her bread and butter there. All right, Kha'Zix. Talk about Kha'Zix. Talking about Kha'Zix. Okay, anyways, Kha'Zix is a mutant and assassin. Sorry, I keep touching my nose. I'm just having some allergies. Uh, Kha'Zix uh, deals some AD, and he is an assassin. So he's an assassin and a mutant, and he is AD DPS. Um, cool, so what does he do? He leaps to, his, uh, leaps to the lowest health target and deals some attack damage to him. So he strikes them and then also mana reaves them. If you don't know what mana reaves means, it increased the mana cost of their next cast. Um, so he mana reaves and deals some damage. Uh, and the next time he casts, he jumps to a different target. So that's what he does. Really simple unit. He's an assassin. So you position him like an assassin to, you just, you know, you position him to kill the enemy, enemy carries, that sort of thing. Uh, cool. So some itemizations for Kha'Zix. His best damage amp item is 100% going to be crit because he is an assassin. Uh, so crit after that i could see him using a lot of items probably needs one defensive like a hodge like a bt like a um this is hodge by the way if you don't know um like a bt like a um what is the other one uh edge of night i could see shred being very good on him i could see rfc in certain situations being decent on him but if you don't know what to do put an infinity edge plus some healing maybe some more damage maybe one uh sustain type item that's that's probably gonna be his build. I could see some patches where like mana amp is decent on him, but I played one mana amp game of Kha'Zix and it felt kind of weird. Um, that's what I'll say about it. it felt kind of weird. Okay, uh, Renata, Renata. This is, Renata is one of my favorite favorite new units coming into the set. I love what she does. Okay, so what is Renata? Renata is a Chemtech and she is a Scholar. Okay, Renata is primarily going to be a support slash DPS. So she's primarily going to be a support, I think, uh, but also could function very well as a DPS on particular patches um, or like an off DPS. Uh, she does contribute quite a bit to your damage, but the role she mostly fulfills is as a utility unit. But yeah, she does contribute very much to your damage. Okay, so what does she do? She deals AP damage over time. So she throws out a big poison cloud in front of her. It'll travel. It doesn't travel the whole board. So um, I think right now it travels six hexes, but that's gonna change with balance. Uh, she, so she throws it in front of her, it deals damage over time to them, um, and then also slows their attack speed for the duration that the spell is active. At the time of making this video, whenever she dies, she no longer deals damage to them. Don't know why that is, maybe it's too OP, uh, but she does still debuff their attack speed. Um, so anyways, that's what she does. Uh, very good to position her like third row uh, so that she can still hit the targets. She is balanced as a backliner, so she is not crazy tanky. But I could see worlds where you frontline her and put tank items on her. By the, by the way, the worlds that I've seen that are the worlds that I've done that several times. So putting her like frontline to make sure that she gets her poison on the on the backline and building like an edge of night on her. Like I straight up just build an edge of night and Morello and toss her on frontline so she can get like some crazy action going. Um, but if uh, but in general. If your planner is a utility unit, she is just going to be your Morello holder. Very good Morello user. So just pop a Morello on her and just watch her go to work and don't put any other items. If she's like just a supportive unit in your build, that's all you need. Um, other than that, if you want to put more items on her, it'll be Morello. Um, a Sojin is going to be pretty good on her. Blue buff's fine, actually. Uh, so the mana amp like that is fine. Death cap is fine. JG, uh, you know, building like a jeweled gauntlet. Uh, Infinity Edge is fine as well. But um, a Gunblade is pretty decent. She does heal quite a bit for Gunblade. It does do um, damage over time. So yeah, in general, if you're playing her as a utility unit, it's just Morello. And if you want to put a mana amp item on her, you can. Um, otherwise, that other otherwise, if you want to play as a carry, it's going to be mana amp plus AP, and that's 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 you know that's how you do it. 
Very good unit. Love Renata. Okay, cool. And we got Sivir. This is a reskin from set 4.5. She was a three cost in set 4.5. So just like Trinity Mary, but the opposite. Now she's a four cost. So it is a reprint. Oh, also she was in set two. Or, yeah, set two. That's right. Okay, anyways, she has attack damage. Extremely simple unit. When she ultimates, she gains attack speed and her autos bounce. So they, they bounce between the units. It is her W from League of Legends. Uh, she is AD scaling. She's a backliner. She's DPS. Very simple. She does get locked hitting frontline, but she does have some backline access from the bounces. So um, her best items are going to be are going to be AD damage amp. So anything like Infinity Edge, Giant Slayer, um, Death Blade, that sort of thing. And then she will also benefit very well from Shred as she will be hitting frontline most of the time. So things like Last Whisper, things like Giant Slayer are going to be very good. And then uh, attack speed amp is fine. Like Gwen Suze is good. Uh, RFC is going to be good on her. Uh, but you could just build a defensive item here if you wanted to, like a BT, like a Edge of Night, that sort of thing. So just AD damage amp, some shred, and uh, maybe some attack speed amp or uh, defensive item is going to be is going to be what you primarily do for her. Very good carry. She's going to be the set. Okay, Vi. Where's Vi? Vi might be my favorite unit this set, guys. If you guys, if you've played set four. Vi is Riven. And that's all I need to say. Like if you played set four and you know what Riven did and you played Riven a lot, Vi is Riven. That's all you need to know. Uh, so cool. What is, Vi, what is Vi? She is a rival, enforcer, and a bruiser. Very good tags here. So what does rival do? I got, I, I'm going to talk about rival a little bit, even though I'm not going to talk about other things because it's pretty relevant. So rival, if Jinx and Vi are on the same board, uh, Jinx and Vi both get debuffed. It's very similar to God King in set five, if you guys played set five. Uh, so yeah. You really do want to play Vi without Jinx. Uh, Vi really benefits not having Jinx on the board, whereas Jinx does like to not have Vi on the board, but Jinx can function pretty decently and do her job with Vi still on the board. But Vi, it, it hurts Vi a lot. So Vi um, has a mana cost of 20 whenever there's no Jinx on the board. But without it, Vi's mana cost is 40. So you can imagine the difference, especially if she functions like Riven, if you guys know what Riven does. So what, is, so what does she do? She is, she does a lot. She is a DPS and a tank. So tank and DPS, she can do she can do it all. Um, you can itemize her or not itemize her. You can put a TG on her. She is Riven, guys. If you guys don't know how glorious Riven was, Riven was glorious. Um, so what does she actually do though? She has three different abilities. Her first ability, she will just she will just hit them like she did in set six and will deal some AoE, an AoE cone, right? And she'll gain a shield. What does she do next? Next, she dashes forward um, and gains a shield so she can dash to her target. Um, and then her last thing is she does her ultimate from League. She picks them up and slams them on the ground, dealing AoE damage all around where they do. So she stuns them and deals AoE damage. And she gains a shield every time she casts. So very good with tank items. Very good with, uh, with AP damage amp. Okay, cool. So what are some good items on her? Primarily, she's going to be best with just tank items if you actually want to itemize her. But a lot of times, guys, you can just toss a Thieves Glove on her and carry someone else. Typically when you play Vi, you want to just have a really beefy Vi, and then you want to play someone else who also deals damage. That's why Vi is so fun. That's why Riven was so fun to play. You just played Riven, and you just put some people who did some, you just put strong units around her, and you need to just have somebody else who has reliable damage as well. Um, so yeah, so primarily you're going to build her tank, but if you want to build her more as a DPS, she is AP. She also is a very good blue buff user, as she will just constantly cast, so very good with blue buff. Very good with just tank items. Ionic Spark, very strong item on her. Giant Slayer is pretty decent. Um, but yeah, for the most part, tank items or a Thieves Glove. But if you want to build her has damage, it's AP and a blue buff. And, and you're good to go. Vi is very cool. Okay, Silco. Wow, this video is going to take a long time. Okay, Silco. <laughs> Silco, what does Silco do? Silco is primarily a support unit. He is almost certainly just a support unit, actually. Um, so what does he do? He has a Mastermind. What masterminds do is he gives mana to allies in front of him, directly in front of him at the beginning of combat. So, for example, um, if this was your team, Misfortune and Malzahar would gain bonus starting mana, and that'll just change throughout balancing at the time we make this video. It's 40, it says 50 on here, but it's not. Um, it's 40 at the time we make this video, it will change throughout balance. But MF and Malzahar would gain starting mana at the beginning of the fight, Morgana in this situation would not. Um, cool. So anybody in front of her. So you can position them for your frontliners, right? To buff your frontliners. 
um, or primarily he's going to be sitting on the back line and you put high value casting units in front of him. That's what he does. And he is a scholar. He fits in pretty much every single comp. Uh, so that's what he does as his trait. What does he actually do for his ability? So his ability, what he does is he buffs the lowest health target on your team on your own team so he buffs the lowest health target so it's primarily most likely going to be a frontliner and what he does is he doubles their health so he gives them 100 health that can change for balance he gives them cc immunity um and he gives them like an insane amount of attack speed the only drawback is is once the duration of his spell is over they will die so they will die and um they will die and they will uh they will explode like chemtech overload and they will deal magic damage around him that is what silco does very good unit if you want to itemize him you know mana gen he's probably he's pretty good static shiv user his, his base attack speed's not bad so um mana gen, um utility items like chalice i bet he'd be a really good chalice holder um shiv is gonna be good uh, you could build AP on him, but for the most part, I think Silco is gonna be one of those legendary units that you don't really put items on. You put leftover items on, or you can like chalice stack him or something like that. But um, I could see patches where Silco carries good, but for the most part, I think he's going to be a unit that you can play in every single comp, but you don't really plan to itemize him, if that makes sense. Okay, cool. Now we got the last of the new champions. What do you got? Zeri. Zeri. Zeri, I would just be completely honest, probably one of the units I've played the least of. I just haven't got a whole lot of opportunities to play, but I have played it. Um, she is a DPS. She is a mixture of AP and AD. The designers say that they want they want to make her AP, but a lot of the builds that I've seen have been successful as AD, but plan on building her AP most of the set because that is what the designers want to do, but be open-minded about playing her AD. Um, she is a debonair and a sniper, obviously. What does she do? Her auto attacks are a bunch of little attacks. You know, it's like a little pea shooter that she has. Um, so they count as individual attacks uh, for certain items. It's it's confusing. They're, they're going to change it a lot. Um, but what you need to know is she fires a little pea shooter. And uh, whenever she, she buffs herself whenever she ults. And she will start shooting her pea shooter at the furthest enemy. And her attacks pierce. So you don't want to be clumped up versus a Zeri. Her attacks will pierce, and every time she attacks, she'll dodge from side to side. Uh, so she's very hard to catch um, and all that good stuff. If she is VIP, she just deals more AoE damage, has more damage. That's basically all you need to know about VIP. Okay, so what are some good items on her? I know Rage Blade's going to be good on her. Um, that's going to be a decent item. Doesn't mean you need to build it all the time. Static Shiv's going to be a good item on her. Uh, I could see her being a decent Morello holder, actually. Uh, Titan's going to be good. Uh, Jeweled Gauntlet's going to be good. AP Amp's going to be good. But guys, remember, be open-minded about playing her AD. Um, I just don't know how the devs are going to balance that. They said they don't want to make her AD. But just be be open-minded about it because like they, they're pretty bad at doing their job when it comes to that part. Um, when it comes to like actually giving a giving a unit their identity and sticking to it. So, um, so yeah, just be mindful of that. Um, Hodge is going to be good on her. Yeah, so any type of uh, like hybrid healing, you know, it's going to be pretty good on her. Trinity Force can be a good item, you know, if you get some Ornn items. So she kind of does it all. Just be really open minded about her build, if I'm being honest. Okay, now we're getting back to units that we played last set. So there we go. Cool. Caitlin. Caitlin is an enforcer. I'm going to try to like rapid fire through these ones, um, but you know, still give you some good info. She's an enforcer and a sniper. She is a DPS primarily. She is. Uh, she is AP, um, primarily. Uh, she fires a single shot at the furthest enemy. So she like preps her gun and she fires. It's her ultimate from League of Legends. Uh, she fires at the furthest enemy, but it can be stopped by frontline. Deals a lot of damage, but it can be stopped by frontline. So you typically don't itemize Caitlyn as a carry. That's just not really how you play Caitlyn. She's she deal she does a lot without items. So you typically don't itemize her as a carry. Um, but if you do, most of the time she's just an item holder for your team. But if you do want to itemize her as a carry, her best items last set were QSS. Honestly, it's probably QSS, Rageway, Giant Sir. I played a lot of Caitlyn. I played a lot of Caitlyn because I played a lot of Kog'Ma. Um, so QSS, Rageway, Giant Slayer is just kind of it for me. Um, she most of the time will be hitting Frontliner, so Giant Slayer is very good. She does deal some hybrid damage, as she is a sniper. Um, you know, So she does deal some decent AD damage because she is auto-attacking. Um, but she is primarily AP, of course. And then... Um, and so QSS to keep her from getting CC'd and Rage Blade to give her that mana amp during that time, kind of scale throughout the fight. She does live a long time. She's usually the last one to die. So something like an amp item like that. And then Giant Surge, she can get through frontline. Alternatively, a Sojin is fine. You know, building AP is fine. Building a Jeweled Gauntlet is fine. But again, you typically don't try to itemize Caitlyn 
as your carry. Uh, but if you do want to itemize as Caitlyn as your carry, that's how you do it. And I can see patches where Caitlyn carry is decent. Um, cool. Camille. Camille has the most overloaded kit I've ever seen for a one cost, by the way. She is a clockwork and a scholar. So what does she do? She is primarily a tank. Um, she de does deal some decent damage sometimes though. Um, she is AP and her thing does a lot. So what she does, she does her leg sweep from league, which is her W, which is a cone in front of her. She sweeps her leg in front of her. Um, it deals damage. So the sweep deals damage to everyone hit. She gains a shield. Doesn't matter how many people she hits, she just gains a shield. Um, and then after that, while her shield is active, her auto attacks heal her for some AP per auto. That's what Camille does. Uh, very good early game tank. Very good, very good unit for that. So you just itemize her as tank, um, or you can give her AP. These items that they suggested here are fine. If you actually want to itemize Camille, like you three-star Camille and you actually want to itemize her, items like um, Archangel, so stacking items, because she does live a very long time. Like Archangel plus two tank items, very strong build. Titans, uh, you could Titan stack her. Uh, but yeah, or you could just build, you know, really tanky items plus AP is fine too, or just like full tank items. But I do, if you actually itemize Camille and you three star her and you want to play her in your build, uh, I do, I think the best version of her is uh, double tank plus Archangel um, or just Titan stacking, which is tank and damage. So, um, so yeah, that's what I like to do with her. Very good early game and mid game if you want to play her as a, as like build your comp around her, but falls off late game, of course. Okay, Darius. Darius, one of the most simple units in the game. He is a tank. Um, he is a syndicate and a bodyguard. He spins, so he spins his axe around him. He heals for each enemy hit. Guys, he's a tank. Put tank items on him. That's what he does. Very good spark holder as well because he um, uh, with with AP with AP units in the early game. That's what Darius does, guys. Very simple. Ezreal. Ezreal is a scrap and an innovator. He is a DPS and he deals attack damage. Um, what he does is he auto attacks right like normal. And then he fires a bolt, which is his Q from League of Legends, hits one target, gets stopped by frontline. Um, so it can get blocked by frontline. And it just deals uh, more attack damage. That's what it does. And uh, whenever, uh, the more he casts his ability, it does stack over time and gives him attack speed. So he does have a natural like Rage Blade built into his kit. Uh, primarily, unless you're going to play him as like a primary DPS, he's a really, really, really good static shiv user especially in the early game as he has really fast attack speed because he has that natural rage blade built into his kit. And even if you do like play like a reroll build, still putting his attack shiv on him is, is not bad because how strong it is for your early game. Um, cool, but if you do want to play, itemize him as a primary DPS or item hold him for a late game carry, these are honestly probably his best items. Um, so a crit amp, crit shred, and, uh, and a rune ends are, are very good. But like essentially what you need is AD damage amp, some type of shred because you are stuck hitting frontline. Um, and then after that, it can be a defensive, it could be Rage Blade, it could be Rune Ends, it could be QSS, it could be a bunch of different stuff. So you just need Damage Amp plus, plus Shred plus one. That's that's Ezreal. Okay, Elawi, Elawi, Elololoi. Where are you, Elawi? There you are. Um, Elawi is a tank. Um, she technically deals AP damage, but you don't itemize her for that. Um, so what does she do? She slams down on a single target. So whoever she's attacking, uh, she kind of slams down, dealing a little bit of magic damage only to them, single target. Um, and then after that, uh, she heals for a portion of damage that that unit takes, the, t the target that she hit. So any damage from any of her allies, she will heal for a portion of that damage to that target specifically. Very good as a primary tank in the early game, um, but not typically someone you itemize for the late game or anything like that. But if you want to itemize her in the early game, you just build tank. That's it. You just build tank and there are some like random Alawi carry builds out there, but they're kind of troll. Um, even though like people do them in challenger, uh, but the people who do carry Alawi builds, they build crit, they build AP crit um, plus one defensive. I think that's what they do. Um, cool. But don't, don't build her as a carry except for those random patches where it's somewhat viable. Okay, Kassadin. Kassadin's actually a lot different from last set. He does exactly the same thing he did from last set, um, but he has different tags, so it's kind of weird. He's a mutant and a scholar. So what he does is he mana reaves a single target. He throws out a little orb, mana reaves them. Um, it is the target that he's that he's currently attacking. And he, um, he deals some magic damage to them, and he gains a little bit of shield. Both of them scale with AP, but you typically not, do not itemize him that way. Um, Kassadin's best items are just tank, I played a lot of Kassadin. It's probably my most played unit of last set. Um, and the best items for Kassadin last set were Warmogs, Bramble, plus Redemption, because that gave him a lot of stuff. But he is no longer a protector. 
So he doesn't scale as hard with health, but still gonna be good. So guys, just build tank items. Build any, if you actually wanna itemize him, build any combination of Bramble, Bramble, Dragon's Call, Warmogs, Ionic Spark, Ionic Spark, Titans, Redemption. Build any combination of those items and you're fine. For the most part, if you wanna itemize him as a carry, just make sure you have whatever is the best uh, tank item on him uh, for that patch. And then after that, just use my instructions of any combination of those items and you're fine. For example, a lot of patches, the best tank item is Bramble. Like if assassins are meta, then I would just make sure I have Bramble and then do any combination past that. If that makes sense. Um, very important if you're actually going to itemize him um, in a reroll build or something like that. But I do not know what his build is now. It, it, is, it escapes me. I've tried. Um, and I'm going to let someone else figure that out. But I do love playing Gassadin. Okay, Poppy. Poppy is a tank. Poppy is a tank. That's all she does. Uh, she's a Yordle and a bodyguard. Uh, so what does she do? Uh, she fires her shield. Uh, so she throws her little buckler shot, um, which is her passive from League of Legends. It's an auto attack. Um, but in this, she fires her shield at the furthest target away from her. And it scales. The damage scales with her armor. So the more bodyguard she has or you build a bramble on her, it will deal more damage. So it does scale with armor. It's kind of interesting. Um, and then she gains a shield uh, that I believe scales with AP. Um, but you do not itemize her for AP, but she gains a shield after she cast, after the Buckler returns to her. Um, cool. Items for Poppy. Tank items, guys. Gargoyle, Bramble, Dragon's Claw, Warmogs. Very good uh, early game tank. Very good tank for the Yordle comp, uh, but Vex functions a little bit better as a tank for the Yordle comp in the late game, for sure. Um, anyways, cool. That's Poppy. Let's talk about Singed. Our boy Singed. Okay, Singed is tank, and he deals AP damage, but you don't itemize him that way. Um, so what does he do? He is also a chem tech and an innovator. Um, he flings his target, so whoever he's attacking, he flings his target at the biggest clump of enemies, stunning the target and uh, and the group. He stuns the group a little bit less than, it's like a micro stun for the group, uh, but, a, but um, a, a decent stun for the target. Um, cool, that's what he does. You typically don't itemize Singed, but if you do want to itemize him, he's a tank. Uh, he's a decent Morello user for the early game, but you know, usually you can find a better Morello user, but tank, uh, or Morello is fine. If you want to itemize him, that's, that's cinched pretty simple unit. Okay. Uh, Twitch, Twitch, also another simple one. He is AD and he has a DPS. He has a chem tech and an assassin. What does he do? He fires a piercing bolt, um, at his target. So it'll go in a line at his target and reduces their healing. So he is an assassin, but he's a little bit different than other assassins. So you typically want to position him in the middle of the board, or you could like position him away from the enemy team, like in late game fights. Uh, but you typically want to position him like in the middle of the board, because like if you position him in the middle of the board, you jump. A lot of people position their backliners like this. Like let's pretend this is someone's backline. And then Twitch, is, Twitch jumps to here, and then he's shooting at J4. He'll hit all three of these targets uh, with his ultimate. So... He deals attack damage, and then he also reduces healing for all of the people that he hits. Um, yeah, again, he has a primarily primarily a DPS, and so some of the best items, the best item, uh, his best damage amp item is for sure going to be Infinity Edge because he is an assassin, of course. Um, after that, some good items on him are um, Edge of Knights, pretty decent item on him. BT's pretty decent on him. I do like to build. I always build damage amp plus shred, and then I usually build third item defensive. So damage amp being infinity edge or death blade, whatever, uh, whatever. Second item being shred, either last whisper or giant slayer. And then third item is either defensive or more, or more damage. And so like a runance hurricane is fine right there. Hodge, mixture of damage and, and, and sustainability. Uh, but typically I'd build like an edge of night or a bloodthirster for third item. Um, also a sleeper, uh, blue buff's pretty decent on him. He does have pretty low mana cost, so he can like fire his bolt, auto attack a couple times, and fire his bolts again. So it's actually pretty decent to actually build a lot of blue buff Twitch if um, if I end up having to build that. All right, cool, that's Twitch. What we got up next, we got Ziggs. We sure do. We sure do got Ziggs. All right, Ziggs is a DPS and, a or and AP. Um, he has a Yordle, a Scrap, and an Arcanist. A lot of good tags there. Very good glue unit for the early game, especially for getting in your Yordles, Arcanist, and that sort of thing. Um, cool. So he does deal an AOE bomb. He throws an AOE bomb at his target, area of effect. If you don't know what that means, I've been saying it the whole time though. Um, and, the, and the ability can miss. So he'll throw it at a hex. So let's say he'll throw it right here and it'll affect enemies near this hex, right? It's not exactly like the whole area around it, but like enemies near this hex, he's throwing it at a Lowie, right? Here's a Lowie, he throws it at her. And then when he's throwing it at her, she walks to here. And the ability was thrown right here. She will not be hit by the ability. She, he can totally, 
totally whiff all of his ultimates in a fight. It happens all the time. Um, cool. That's why he's a one cost though, and a Yordle. Anyways, that's what he does. Pretty simple. Uh, you can position him back on, obviously. He's a backline DPS. Um, not a very good primary DPS in the late game, but he's pretty he's okay in the early game as primary DPS. But again, he has really good, really, really good tags. Uh, a lot of times in the early game, you can also just frontline him to make him just cast at the beginning of the fight. Because a lot of times in the early game, you guys will notice you'll be like, Zig sucks, he needs to be changed. But really just positioning him wrong. If you have a really weak frontline, uh, your frontline will die really early, and then Ziggs will cast and miss everybody because they'll be walking at him. So if that is your issue, you just frontline your Ziggs, get him to cast, and then he dies, and hopefully he kills the unit when he casts. You know what I mean? Um, so that's how you play Ziggs. So some items on Ziggs are going to be good. Um, he's very good with AP Amp, obviously. He does hit a lot of frontline, so Giant Slayer is also a decent item on him. So AP Amp, Giant Slayer. Uh, mana gen items, if you're playing 6 Yordle, Blue Buff is definitely his best item. Uh, Blue Buff is probably just his best mana item in general, but Sojin is also fine, um, unless you're playing 6 Yordles and Sojin is not very good. Uh, but blue buff, Sojin, both are fine. So mana amp, mana amp, um, AP amp, um, AP amp, that sort of thing. Giant Slayer is fine. And uh, Gunblade is honestly fine. And Static Shiv is, is fine on him as well because he does deal magic damage. And you're probably going to sell him anyway. So you don't have to worry about like making sure he has like really good items. You're probably going to sell him. So just, so just build good items on him in the early game, that sort of thing. All right, Blitz. Uh, Blitz has been in like so many sets of TFT. I feel like if you've ever played TFT, you should know what Blitz does. But if you don't know what Blitz does, he's a scrap, he's a bodyguard, he's a tank. And what does he do? He At the very beginning of the fight, he starts with full mana. He pulls the furthest target. So he throws his hook out and he pulls them all the way to him. So if Ezreal is back here, he'll pull them all the way to him in one of these hexes. And once he lands, he knocks them up. Very, very, very strong unit Blitz is. That's all he does, guys. You typically do not itemize Blitz. So don't itemize Blitz. Even if you three star, don't itemize blitz. But if you want to, Zephyr is his best item because you can do this like little cheesy thing where you put a Zephyr on him, you put him in the corner and because a lot of people will position this way. Let me show you. A lot of people will like, let's say they're carrying their misfortune. They'll position their Malzahar in the corner and blitz is on the opposite side. Just pretend blitz is on the opposite side. Uh, blitz, will, blitz will hook the Malzahar, right? And then MF will be free to do whatever she wants. Um, but a lot of people will build a Zephyr and you guys should know how Zephyr works. Uh, whatever. Which CC... Oh, I can't find it. I don't know why. Okay. Zephyr. It CCs a unit for five seconds. So if, if I was on the complete opposite hex, like pretend Blitz is all the way on the other corner. Blitz is over there. Then this unit would be CC'd by the Zephyr. And then I would hook MF. You know, you'd be CC'd by the Zephyr over here. And be hooked by MF. And there you go. So that's the only item you ever put on Blitz. That's it. Don't itemize Blitz. You want to itemize blitz in other ways put tank items on him i guess or put a death cap on him for fun okay lulu um where's lulu 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 okay lulu is a supportive unit she is a yordle and an enchanter so she heals her target and um so what she does is she makes her target big it's her ultimate from league of legends but essentially just think about it as a heal she heals them she gives them health um she heals them and then she micro stuns enemies around her target. So it's, a, it's just an interrupt. So if they are in the middle of channeling ability, it would interrupt them or something like that. Um, so it is an interrupt, it's not really a real stun. So that's why it's called a micro stun. Um, number of targets that she can buff scales with her star level. Um, this might change with balance change, but like at one star it's one, at two starts two, and at three starts three. So you actually get a pretty decent buff at three starring a Lulu. But you would only three star Lulu if you're carrying a Yordle primarily. Um, don't itemize Lulu. Don't put items on her. There you go. If you want to put items on her, like a Sojin's fine. And like these AOE items are good. You know, she can get like leftover utility items, that sort of thing. But don't itemize Lulu, guys. Don't do it. Not good. Um, maybe there'll be a patch where it's fine, but it, it, there wasn't a single patch of set six where that was, it was good to itemize her. But in set four, it wasn't bad. Um, cool. Quinn? Where are you, Quinn? There you are, Quinn. All right, we got Quinn. Quinn is actually primarily a supportive unit. She's supportive and then somewhat of a DPS. Um, so she is a mercenary and she is a challenger. Actually a really decent unit. She is the best utility unit of the challenger tree because challengers, um, you know, is a really aggressive trait and she's actually the only one with you, any type of utility. She has AP, which is interesting again for being a challenger. Um, she blind, So what her ability does, she fires out a little bird at the highest attack speeds target. It does AOE damage and the spell will apply as an AOE spell. Um, and it blinds them. So it blinds her target and anyone within one hex range of them, I believe it's one hex, 
Um, it blinds them and it'll stop them from like attacking and stuff like that. So it's very good. Um, and this is not blocked by frontline. Okay, if you want to itemize Quinn, do not. Why does it recommend 80 items? I do not know why. But if you want to itemize Quinn, things like I really like uh you only itemize like when you play Quinn and you want to play her as like a like a supportive carry in your build, it's because you're probably carrying like a Warwick or a Trendomir or something like that. So she gets like your leftover items for the most part. And I really like just putting like a QSS and a Sojin and just watch her go to work, just um, CCing enemies. And if I get a random death cap later, I'll just do like QSS, Sojin, death cap. But typically you don't itemize Quinn, except for like a Rage Blade, uh, QSS or Sojin, just to make sure she gets a lot of cast off. Cause she does help your team quite a bit, but she doesn't like, like randomly she'll pop off and do a lot of damage, but she, her, her role within your team is not to contribute with damage. Uh, but sometimes she will pop off. So you can put some damage items on her. If you have her three starred or, you know, sometimes she pops off. But for the most part, you just wanted to cast a lot. Okay, Swain. Where's Big Daddy Swain? There's my guy. Okay, Swain. Um, he is a reprint from last set, but his traits changed. He's a hex deck now. Um, and he was an arcanist just like last set. So his primary role within a team is a tank. Uh, but he also is like somewhat of a decent uh, DPS and there will be patches for sure where he's a good carry. There were just a patch in last set where he was a carry. So what does he do? He has AP. Um, he uh, has a little cone in front of him. So his, his ability is a cone in front of him. It goes about two hex range and he shoots like Sith lightning out of his hands. Um, just, just one real quick, just cool. Um, that's what he does and uh, deals some damage and it heals him for every target that a that a hit that is hit, he's he's positioned like a frontliner, or you position him second row. He's really good positioned on the side, um, so that he if he's hitting frontline, uh, you know enemy frontline is this is enemy frontline that he's going to be hitting all of them right. Um, also very good to position him, especially if he's as a, as a carry. Make sure he's positioned in front of the enemy team, so he can if he kills the frontline, he'll walk to the enemy backline and kill them. So um, so yeah, so in front of the enemy team to the side is gonna be his best position, uh, pretty unique position for a frontliner. So what are some itemizations? I forgot to put Swain on the board. Swain, where are you? Swain. Okay, Swain, very, uh, this is actually his itemization. If you want itemization as a carry, this was his build last set, which was just QSS, Giant Slayer, um, Rabadons, because he is stuck in frontline. So Rabadons to get the, the huge AP amp, and then Giant Slayer because he's in here, and he is a front because he's in your frontline, and QSS because he's a frontliner, you don't want him to get CC'd. Some other good items, some cons uh, considerations, just building flat out tank on him is not bad, um, especially in an Arcanist build or a Hex deck build. Um, putting flat out, flat out tank is fine, uh, or building like, or Titan stacking, or building uh, Archangels, also very good. Uh, Ionic Spark, very good, because it will shred the people he's attacking. Uh, so yeah, either tank, this AP build, this is actually the build right here, um, or or just or just like uh, utility built items for your build, like Ionic Spark, that sort of thing. Cool. Um, okay, we have Swain. Now we have Talon. Talon, Talon, Talon. This is a reprint from last set. All that's changed is he is now Debonair. Um, he does exactly what he did last set. So what he does, he is a DPS. He is actually AP, but does deal some decent AD damage because he is an assassin. He is AP and he deals damage over time. So what does he do? His first auto attack, so he jumps. His first auto attack on an enemy, they jumped. Here's my enemies. His first auto attack on an enemy will cause them to bleed, taking damage over time. And then after that, every subsequent third hit to that target will... Um, will cause them to uh, bleed again. This ability can stack. So let's say, but so it's important how you understand that though, because Talon jumps back here, let's say he hits Sejuani, and then for whatever reason, he switched targets and he starts hitting Swain. Sejuani will still be bleeding from that first auto attack. And when he attacks Swain, Swain will immediately start bleeding from the first auto attack. Um, so every, every time he initially makes contact with an enemy, his ability will cast when he hits them and he has no mana. Um, it's just his auto attack. And then after he starts hitting him, every subsequent third hit will cause the bleed again. And, and, it, and it does stack. Um, cool. So that's how that works. Very good paired with Blitz. Just give you one tip. I, I'm not really doing a lot of these tips in here, but one tip paired with Blitz, whenever he jumps, uh, Blitz will hook um, as he hits them. So they'll start bleeding while they're in the air. And then normally Blitz can kind of finish them off if, if Talon is your DPS. So um, very good paired with Blitz. So some itemization for Talon. This is actually Talon's best in slot. Um, infinity and because because he was from last set this is the only one, one of the only ones i'll say this is his best in slot because this was very well figured out and defined infinity edge 
Quicksilver and uh, RFC are definitely his best items. Just crit amp for obvious reasons, QSS because he's got to stay active, and then RFC because it gives him attack speed, keeps him safe. Um, he just gotta keep. He gotta get. He gotta get. You know, he he has to get these ble this bleed stacking. You know what I'm saying? He has a lot of damage naturally. Uh, but other items that are fine on him: Gunblade, Deathcap, Hodge, um, Edge of Night, that sort of thing. Those are all very good items on him. Um, and there you go. There's Talon. Talon, Warwick. Here's my guy. My guy Warwick. Okay, Warwick is a Kim Tech and a Challenger. His primary primary role within a team is DPS or just a synergy bot if you're going to carry someone else. So he is primarily a DPS. Most of, his, most of his damage is AP, but he has a lot of hybrid damage. He's AP and, a, and AD um, because he is a challenger, so he deals a lot of AD damage. And um, and some of even the like damage items that you want to build for his like APS build also amp his, amp his AD. So he deals quite a bit of both. And so what does he do? He's also another champion that has no ability. His auto attacks just damage and heal per auto, and it scales with ability power. Um, cool. But if you want to carry Warwick, his best items are QSS, Static Shiv. He is just a Static Shiv bot if you want to play him as carry. You got to make sure to have QSS so he doesn't get CC'd because he is a frontliner. Those are his items. QSS, Static Shiv, if you want to play his carry, super strong. Third item after that, um, Titans is very good or Giant Slayer. So any combination of QSS, but you probably really need QSS. QSS um, or any combination of QSS plus any of these three items, RF, or not RFC, Static Shiv, Titans, and um and giant slayer are his best items you can also just like not even build shiv and you can go giant slayer titans also a very good build you build you do deal a little bit more ad damage in that in that type of build but guys those are his items other than that like attack speed amp um you know jg's not bad when you're item holding for him honestly archangel isn't awful but it's i don't prefer it uh but yeah that that's warwick guys um cool zillion zillion Zillion, bin billion, bin billion. Uh, Zillion is a support unit. That's all he does. Um, he is AP and he deals AOE damage, a single stun, and an AOE attack speed debuff. Pretty overloaded, right? He's a clockwork and an innovator. So what does he do? He throws a bomb at his target, or actually I think it might be the nearest um, target because a lot of times he'll throw it at assassins. Very good for throwing at assassins. So he'll throw a bomb at the nearest enemy. And whenever he does that, um, it stuns them. And, uh, and after, after a duration of time, a short duration of time, it explodes dealing magic damage on him and one hex around. So, um, if you threw it on here, it would deal all around, all around this guy. Um, cool. And it would stun this guy. And then after that, it debuffs their attack speed. Everyone who was in that damage radius, their attack speed will be debuffed for a, a portion of time. Um, cool. That's what he does. He's very well paired with singed and they also have very very similar synergies. They're both innovators. So very well paired with Singed because if he is right behind your Singed and um, and there's no Assassins back here, he will throw his bomb onto Singed target if you make sure he's right behind Singed. And if Singed throws his target, so let's say we got a bunch of homies over here. This is the enemy. This is the enemy team. And we're fighting this guy. And the bomb is on this guy. And then Singed throws this guy over to here. Whenever, um, you know, throws this guy over to here, Whenever, he, whenever that target lands, if that bomb is still on them, the bomb will debuff all of these people and damage all of these people. So they're very good paired with each other. It's like a bomb delivery system. Um, cool. Like a ball delivery system, like in, uh, in League for Ori. Anyways, Zillion, don't put items on Zillion. But if you want to itemize them, it's Sojin plus uh, AP Amp. That is actually the items. Don't itemize Zillion. Okay, Zyra. Zyra. Zyra is primarily a supportive unit, but I could see patches where a DPS Zyra is fine. Also, sometimes you end up having to play Zyra as your carry for early and mid game, sometimes. Um, but primarily, she is a supportive unit. Um, she is a Syndicate and a Scholar. Very good tags. So she does AP damage and it does AoE damage. And, um, oh wait, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, it is AP and AOE. I was reading the wrong line, but it is AP and a AOE, of course. But what she does is she throws out her root and she she roots the entire an entire row, the most populated row of the enemy. It does have a slight delay. So if all the homies were here, she would cast it on this row because there are three people here. Keep in mind though, when she casts, it does have a slight delay. So if these homies move, 
then she's still casting on this row, even though these three are here now. Um, so uh, you can completely miss with the ability as well. Uh, so it is, it is a little frustrating to deal with, but that is why she is a two, two cost. Okay, typically you do not itemize Zyra, but if you want to, this is probably the build. Again, don't play in the itemized Zyra for the most part, but like a Spear of Sojin plus AP Amp. That's our items. There you go. Uh, QSS also fine too. Okay, cool. Uh, that is Zyra. Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath he is a tank and also a decent contributor of damage to your team. Sometimes he will be your primary damage dealer if you want to play a Cho'Gath type build. Um, so what does Cho'Gath do? He is a mutant. He is a Colossus. He is a bruiser. Um, he is primarily AP, but there are some AD builds. It really depends. Uh, you have to have a very special mutation and have very special items, but primarily plan to play him as just a tank that contributes a little bit of AP damage to your team. Um, cool. So what does he do? He bites his target. Um, so just whoever's in front of him, bites him, dealing some magic damage. And if he kills them, he gains permanent HP for the rest of the game. So it stacks. Very good. That's what he does. Um, cool. So some itemization on him. Tank. Just build tank. You're good to go. Um, these are fine. These are probably the best tank items in the game. Oh, he doesn't really benefit a whole lot from Warmogs because he just gains health naturally. But if you build a Warmogs, it's whatever. Um, also, another good item is going to be Ionic Spark. And guys, if you want to pay the AD build, I think it's it's like Crit Runans plus one. Uh, and that is just... That, that that is not supposed to be a build, but sometimes it is. And so if that's ever a build sometimes, um, that, that's that's probably what it is. That's Shogath, very simple unit. Um, Echo. Okay, Echo is a, is a support unit of the Assassin build. He's, he's, if you play Assassins, you're gonna be playing Echo 99% of the time if you're playing Assassins, because he is just such a good unit. So he's a support, he deals, AO, he deals AP. Um, and so what his ability does, it's an AOE cast. It's his W from League of Legends. He throws it down. He throws it at the biggest clump of enemies, I believe, or maybe it's the biggest clump of total units. Point is what you need to know, biggest clump. Um, he throws it down at the biggest clump. I think it is of total units, including your team. Um, and what it does is it's an AOE, it deals damage, but, all, but it, it's an attack speed buff and debuff for the clump. So your team will be buffed and the enemy team will be debuffed. Very good unit. And guys, all you need to put on Echo is a Morello Nomicon. Uh, this is probably his best items if you want to put three items on him. Um, Sojin, Morello, and Frozen Heart. Um, although his ultimate applies a Frozen Heart, it's really good to have him like jump. Uh, since he's a utility unit, assassins are really good for Frozen Heart, and you always put Frozen Heart on the utility unit because the other assassins you want to build damage items on, right? So he's the utility item, utility item holder. So if you want to build three items, this is actually the item setup. Other than that, you typically just put Morello on him and just throw and put leftover items on him. Um, and that's what you do. Very, very, very strong unit. He's an innovator, assassin, and scrap. He's an innovator to this set now, guys. So good. Echo's so good. Okay, GP, Gang Plank, Gang Plank. Um, he is a mercenary and a twin shot. He is a DPS and AD single target ability cast. What does he do? He just fires his pistol. Um, at, uh, at at whatever his target is. If he kills him, he gains some gold. That's it. That's all he does. Um, cool. What are some of his good items? He definitely, if you want to carry him, he definitely needs Shred. So either Last Whisper or Giant Slayer. Some type of damage amp, like Infinity Edge, Death Weight. I think Infinity Edge is probably his best one. And then third item is whatever you want. Do you want more damage? Do you want more sustain? Do you want more tankiness? It's probably sustain. It's probably BT or Edge of Night, third item. Um, but if you want to build full damage, something like Runans is fine too, or build a Giant Slayer with your current Shred build, um, that's fine too. But he's a DPS primarily. Um, usually he's just like an item holder for your mid game, or you just play him until you cash out and you get out. But if you do want to play him as your actual carry, it is damage amp plus Shred, plus uh, usually one tanky or uh, an additional damage. Yes. All right, uh, GP. Now we got Leona, Leona Lewis. Okay, anyways, uh, she is a debonair and a bodyguard. If I had to like design a unit that is just a tank, it would be this unit. This is all this unit does. This unit is a tank. Um, she gives an AOE uh, resistance buff to your team. So MR and magic resist for your team around her. It's like a one hex range around her. It's pretty small. Uh, so for basically for your whole front line. And so she is just going to be a primary tank and you want to put her next to a lot of other units so that she can buff them. She gives a magic... Magic resistant armor, and then she gains a shield that scales with AP. Um, yeah, so you typically just position her on front line, but sometimes, especially uh, if there's like assassins in the lobby and I need to protect my back line, whatever my back line is, 
Um, I need to protect my backline. A lot of times I'll just put her right in front of right in front of these guys. So if they get jumped, she'll buff my backline. Um, or if I, it, yeah. So you could put her here as well to try to buff your like three hex backliner or something like, I don't know, like a Draven or, you know, maybe you don't have VIP Draven. So that she'll buff her, buff Draven. Um, and if the enemies are fighting here, she'll buff Draven and the front line. Uh, so just be mindful. Those are some like extra things you can do with her positioning. Uh, Leona. Cool. Just a tank, tank items, guys. Um, if you want to put tank items on her, you can. Typically, you just itemize her for the mid game. If you want a primary tanker, and then you like transition the items over to Braum or Galio, whatever. But you could keep the tank items on her for the rest of the game. She's very, very, very tanky. Okay, Malzahar. This is Mort Dog's favorite unit, all time favorite unit. It is. Um, he is a mutant and an arcanist. He has a DPS. That is all he does. Um, he is AP, and he has damage over time to a single target. Um, unless he is three starred, then that single target can bounce. Okay, but let's talk about the ability. So what the ability does, it's his, uh, is this his E from League of Legends? I don't remember, but it's uh, it's a space aids from League of Legends where it does the damage over time. Um, cool, so you throw it at your target and um, and if the target dies, the ability will bounce to the nearest uh, nearest target um, and that and that can stack the ability can stack but it only lasts the duration so let's say the ability is like eight seconds long he puts the ability on somebody they die in six seconds the ability bounces it'll only last for two seconds but if you kill them in one second you know it bounces over it'll last for seven seconds on the other person it works like that and the ability can stack so it can deal double damage if you like cast again on them on a on a target that already has it on them it will stack so he does ramp really 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 well over time so what are some good items on our guy? So if you're going to carry Malzahar, um, his best mana item most of the time is going to be Sojin, unless you have um, that mutation, what is it, Syn Synaptic Web, then it's Blue Buff is his best mana gen item. After that, you want AP Amp, AP Amp, like Deathcap, Archangels, Jeweled Gauntlet sort of thing, but Archangels probably his best item. He does take a long time to kind of ramp up. Um, so you just want Mana Amp or Mana Amp, AP amp, and then third item is whatever you want. Do you want more healing? Do you want more damage? Uh, do you want Morello? He is a decent Morello holder because of the bounce and because of the damage over time. It re-triggers every second, the, the Morello. So he's a decent Morello user, but if you play, her, play him as primary carry, you typically do not want to put a Morello on him. Uh, a lot of times he just holds Morello. If you're not playing him as primary carry, he is a good Morello holder because he just holds Morello for your late game Kai'Sa uh, for, the, for the most part. But yeah, if you want to play carry, AP amp, mana amp, uh, plus one is your build. Okay, that's Malzahar. What we got left? MF? Man, guys, we are getting through this, aren't we? I am thirsty. Okay, MF. Uh, she is a DPS and uh, to a lesser degree, a supportive unit. She deals AP, AOE, AOE damage over time, and has a healing debuff on her kit. She's a mercenary and a sniper. So what does she do? Um, she casts her ability at her target it is like one hex. Uh, maybe it's, I think it's two hex. It's actually two hex, I think. Uh, two hex, it's a big AOE circle. It's her E from League of Legends, I believe. Make it rain, right? She rains down bullets and it deals damage over time, over over a small duration. And uh, and they take, and, and those units have their healing reduced for a small duration after after they are damaged. Um, cool, very well paired with Zach. Um, Cause Zach, he pulls people together. Um, and MF will cast on top of that. Very good, paired with Zach. Just a little bit of positioning tip for you there. Uh, make sure when you're playing MF, if MF is your primary DPS, you just wanna make sure MF is in front of the enemy's clump. So, um, you know, if enemy is positioning on this side, you wanna make sure she's on this side, not this side. Even though she's a sniper, you wanna make sure that she's able to hit their backline as soon as possible. Um, because if she's stuck over here, she'll be hitting some random ass units. And then whenever, and then it'll take her forever to kill the, like the clumped front line. That's what like walk to here. You just want to make sure she's in front of the enemy team and, um, very well paired with Zach, but she doesn't have to be paired with Zach. Okay. Let's put her on here. Um, what are our items? Sojin plus, uh, AP amp, uh, is great. You know, although she already has a damage reduction on her spell, Morello is, she's actually a decent Morello holder, but if you want to play her as a carry, you would not put Morello on her for the late game. So yeah, this is probably her best itemization, something like this. Um, Alternatively, you can also build a giant there. You can build Gunblade. You can build Hodge. Um, you can build a defensive item if you really want to. Uh, but that's Misfortune. Very good unit. I like Misfortune a lot. Okay, Vex. Vex is a Yordle and an Arcanist. She is the best frontliner Arcanist unit, and she is probably the best frontliner of the Yordle build as well. Uh, what does Vex do? She is primarily a tank. She does deal some damage, but she's primarily a tank. She is AP. 
What does she do? Very simple unit. She gains a shield um, over a certain period that which scales with her magic damage. She, so she gains a shield, and after a certain duration, uh, the shield will pop, even if the shield has already been dissolved by enemy damage. It will pop and will deal AoE damage one hex around her. That's what she does. Very good tank. And as I said, you just build tank items on her. Bramble, Dequal, Ionic Spark. That's probably her best in slot items. Um, but other than that, just other tank items like Redemption, War Mogs, that sort of thing. That's going to be good on her. Uh, you do not want to itemize her as damage. Very similar to Annie. If you guys played Annie in past sets, set three, set four. If you guys played Annie, very similar. Hey, Zach, we just talked about him a little bit. Zach is a Kimtech. Zach is a Bruiser. Um, he is tank and he does scale with AP, but you typically do not itemize him with any AP items unless you three star him. He actually does deal some decent damage, but you typically do not itemize him. For the most part, you don't itemize him at all. But if you end up three starring him, you do itemize him. There's just better bruisers to itemize like Vi, Sejuani, that sort of thing for tank items. But yeah, he's a tank, but he, he has a really good ability. And so it's an AoE, or not AoE, it's a stun. So what he does is he stuns his target. He throws out his little arm. He stuns his target and he stuns uh, the nearest target within his range, which is like two hexes or so. So let's say he's fighting this guy. And then, um, I don't know, this guy is, this guy is, this guy's over here. He'll grab him and then he'll grab him and he'll, he'll push them together. So they'll end up like right here, right here, something, you know what I mean? Uh, so he'll, he'll grab them and then he'll slap them together. That's why he's so good paired with MF. So imagine your Zach is here, your MF. There's MF, MF, MF is right here. You know, you you cast your ability on this cast in, but at the same time, Zach pulls Ezreal over here, and now both of them are getting hit by the target. That's why they're so good paired together. Um, cool. Gotta get Zach back. Hey Zach, as I said, guys, you typically don't itemize them, but if you do, um, just put tank items, Ionic Spark, and if you want to put a random damage item, put a Death Cap. Have some fun. Uh, there you go. Uh, cool, Zach. Brom. Brom is the probably the best frontliner in the game. Not like there's not people who do stuff better than him. Like Galio is better than him, but you can play Brom every single game unless you're playing Bruisers. Um, Brom is so good. You can play Brom every single game. You could you could never you could only play Brom the entirety of set 6.5, and you could like hit Challenger or something. He's gonna be so good. Um, he's so good. Anyways, um, just like never play Bruisers. Uh, very good. So he's a tank. Uh, he has an AOE stun and, and knock up. So he has an AOE. It's two hex range, actually. So everybody uh, within two hexes of him. Um, so this this row and this row, you know, all around in this area, um, they are going to uh, be knocked up and stunned. So the row in front of him and the additional row ahead of him. Here and here. It's really big. It looks bigger on this screen, but it's, it's two rows. Um, all around him. And then... Um, and then also it continues towards his target. So if he's, if he's, if he's launching it at Alawi, it'll stun everybody in this area and it'll also travel this direction. So if he cast it this direction, if someone was in the corner on the enemy team, they would also get knocked up and stunned. Does that make sense? Um, cool. So positioning Braum is really important. Uh, Braum, you either just position him like primary tank, you know, just up here and all that good stuff. But you really want him in front of the enemy carry if they're like a frontline carry. If they're like a, if they sit on second row or first row or third row, having them in front of them is so huge. Um, like last set, if you put against an Urgot, like let's 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 pretend this is Urgot or whatever. Um, like Draven sometimes will be on frontline. If if we were if he was on second row on the enemy team and I was on frontline on my team, um, and he casts, he would knock up this Urgot or Draven every single time. Um, because they are within his within his range makes sense uh, so really 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 important to put him in front of enemy carries so if there's like an enemy you know warwick carry or uh you know vi or something like that you know uh irelia make sure that he's in front of them um itemization is just tank tank items you know redemption that sort of thing decent morello user but usually usually you can have a better morello user on your team but if you don't have a good morello user he's a decent morello user as well um cool Brom, we're almost done, guys. Jin. By the way, I don't dislike making these videos or anything like that. This just takes a really long time of me talking uh, without stopping. So, uh, Jin. Jin is a DPS. He is 80 carry. He is a clockwork. He is a sniper. Okay, what does his ability do? It is his ultimate from League of Legends. If you know what his ultimate does from League of Legends, I've already said enough. Um, but if not, what he does is he has piercing auto attacks in his ultimate. He opens up. And he, get, he pulls out a sniper. He normally has a little pistol. He pulls out a sniper. 
and he shoots four shots, you know, um, at a normal auto attack speed. So he shoots his four shots in, at his target and it pierces through them so it'll go across the whole board. And his fourth shot will is guaranteed the crit and will deal bonus damage for how much missing health they have. So he's very good at killing tanks with his last shot if they're already injured. Um, very good at one-shotting with his last shot. The other thing you need to know is he he cannot gain attack speed. His attack speed is locked, but if he does have additional attack speed, that additional attack speed is converted into attack damage. So like if you build Clockwork or Rage Blade or RFC or something like that, he does gain attack damage from that, even though his uh, attack damage speed is locked. He's just a backliner. Best to put him in the corner um, or, or wherever. It, this is probably his best in slot right here. Infinity Edge, Last Whisper, Quicksilver. Probably his best best on slot right there, but um, it really depends on the patch because Infinity Edge is going to be his best damage amp item for sure. Um, after that, you just need Shred for whatever is... Shred is really important for whatever is good on that patch, like Last Whisper, Giant Slayer, and then third item is really whatever you want it to be. He's actually a good blue buff user because he does have really high mana cost and he needs to cast twice. Um, so getting that first cast off because he almost insta-casts, he, ca he auto-attacks like twice and then the blue buff will make him go into his sniper version. Uh, that is actually pretty decent on him. But yeah, like QS, QSS is good. BT is good. Uh, Blue buff is good. Sojin's fine. Um, Edge of Night is fine. Uh, yeah, so just 80 amp. It's usually 80 amp, shred, plus one. That's his build. Very good unit. Um, pro tip, just pair him with Orianna literally every single game. Look at this. Like his build is so easy to make. Once you just pair him with Orianna, you're good to go. Uh, we already talked about Kha'Zix. So what do we have next? We have Ori. Just like we just said. Ori. Make sure to pair Ori with Jin. So good. Okay, anyways, she's a clockwork and an enchanter. What does Ori do? Ori kind of does it all. She does a lot, but she is a support and a DPS um, primary. She's primarily support, and then uh, sometimes she can be your damage carry. Um, and even if she's not your damage carry, she does contribute very well to your damage a lot of times. Uh, so what does she do? She does it all here. She's AoE damage, stun, clumps them together like Zack, and shields your allies um, that are hit by her ability. So, um, but she fires it at the most uh, populated area of the map. So that includes her team as well. So if we had a squad of enemies over here, and then we had a squad of homies over here, and one enemy, she would cast here. This is one enemy. And these are my homies. She would cast here. But if that enemy was here, she would cast here. Make sense? Um, and then, so all those things apply. So if she hits the enemies... So the enemies are like this. And she hits the enemies. It'll put them all together right here. It'll warp them together if you don't know what it does. It's her ultimate from League of Legends. Um, but yeah, if if we have a homie over there too, uh, you know, the Singe does our homie. He's over here. And I ulted this group. Singe would get a shield that scales with AP. Um, but these guys would just take damage and get knocked up, right? Um, cool. That's what she does. Look at her items. Uh, she's very, if you want to carry her as a damage carry, Death Cap is 100% her best item because it scales her shield as well. You do not want to build like crit, those sort of things. You can't crit a shield. Um, Sojin's her best mana amp item. So just Sojin plus Death Cap plus one. Those are his items you want to play her as carry. But a lot of people do a tech where you just stack these chalices on her because it gives her starting mana and then she can buff her other allies. So she's like very good paired with other enchanters, very good paired with Seraphine, and very good paired with Jin. Of course, that is Oriana. Oriana is a very good unit. Make sure you learn how to play around her. Very good. Okay, Seraphine is a socialite and an innovator. Whew, that's what she does. Uh, she is a support, uh, but also she's very similar to uh, Oriana, where she contributes very well to your damage. I'd say she's a little bit, uh, leans a little bit more towards the contributing to your damage than than the utility part, but she does have a lot of supportive parts to her kit. So she fires, it's her ultimate from League of Legends, but she doesn't charm them. Um, what she does, she fires her ultimate League of Legends, which is a beam. She fires it in front of her, it goes to the whole board, and she throws it at the biggest clump, uh, biggest clump on the board. And we're to Ori. So she throws it, it deals damage to enemies, it heals your allies, and it gives an attack speed buff to your allies. That's what she does. Um, pro tip, she's very good at be be positioned in the corner and you just put your carry right next to her because the carry will always get healed if she casts uh every time she casts they'll always get healed so ari will always get the heal if you do the position reversed um it will not always heal it'll only heal if she casts this way but i don't know why she would cast that way um so yeah very important um cool seraphine where are you again i keep doing that okay uh items this is probably your, these are our best items right here um sojin 
Uh, Sojin, Morello, plus Mana Amp. Those are her best items, uh, but she's typically you do not itemize her. Um, like you'd itemize, you unless you're carrying her, you'd itemize other people, and then she would either be your Morello. She'd probably just be your Morello holder. Um, she's a really good Morello holder for your team, but unless you have a better Morello holder, then you can put it on someone else. But you typically don't itemize her. You just put uh, Morello on her. And if you want to itemize her further, Sojin is probably your next best item. And then a death cap is also very good. A death cap is also very good. So cool. Um, all right. That was just a spam call. So that sucks. All right. Cool. Uh, Galio. Let's go back to Galio. Where is he? There's my guy. Galio. He's, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one can. Um, he's primarily a tank but also can be itemized as a DPS on certain patches. Riot really doesn't want him to be a DPS, but they like leave the door open for it to be possible, but they really don't want him to be a DPS, but they, um, you know, they sometimes you can play him as DPS. So that, that's all you need to know. And there will be patches. He primarily, if you, if you, if you itemize him as a DPS, you primarily itemize him as an attack damage carry. Strange. Um, uh, but his spell, his spell, his spell actually deals AP. Um, so if you don't itemize him as a damage carry, he will deal mostly AP damage. So he has a big AOE knock up and stun, and it deals some damage. The stun scales off of how long they're CC'd, scales off of the health difference between Galio and the enemy. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, and, and if, and if Galio deals critical strike damage when he auto attacks, he will stomp the ground and will deal AOE damage. They call him Clapio. Um, cool. So... Primarily, if you put him as a tank, I actually think his best tank item is Warmogs because this is a health difference. But just tank items, guys. Warmogs, Redemption, Declaw, Bramble, that sort of thing. But if you want to play him as a carry, his items are <laughs> his items are Infinity Edge. Infinity Edge. It's Infinity Edge, Last Whisper, plus one is typically what it is. But it's usually a Runan's Hurricane um, or a tank item there. So it's it's IE, Last Whisper, plus one. If you want to play in damage, uh, you're welcome. All right, cool. Galio. All right, now we got Jace. Jace is another very unique unit. So Jace is either going to be a backliner or a frontliner. He is our other god unit. He is a god unit. Um, he does scale with AD primarily. Okay, so Jace has two different forms. His is transformer passive. He's a transformer. He's an enforcer. He's an innovator. Um, that's his passive. Oh, important to know Galio is a colossus. So he does take up two, two spots on your team and a socialite and a bodyguard. That's what Galio does. Anyways. Um, if you position Jace on the front two rows, he turns into his hammer form where he, where he carries a hammer. He gets bonus, uh, he gets better tank stats and he does stuff that's different. If he's on back line, back two rows, he has his gun, he has his cannon. So front row, hammer, back row, back two rows, cannon. Anyways, all right, if you put him on front row with the hammer, what he does is he gains a shield whenever he casts. He swings his hammer from side to side, and then he does like a front flip and slams on the ground. Whenever he slams on the ground, he does Omni Shred. So he shreds armor and magic resist, uh, one hex around him. I believe it's one hex, maybe a little bit farther, um, but you don't really need to know that stuff. And then if he is cannon, oh my God. If he is cannon, what he does is he opens up the hex gates and he gains attack speed. And everyone in this row gains attack speed. So if there's an Ezreal here, there's a Senna here. They gain attack speed. But if, if, if he opens up the hex gate and they gain attack speed, but then they move, they will no longer gain the attack speed benefit. They're not standing in the hex gate. So um, anyways, all that good stuff. So anyways, Jace, he opens up the hex gate and then he starts firing, uh, you know, cannon blast and, uh, and it will fire shock blast towards the clump. And the, the last shot he does is a little bit bigger than the other one belief so i don't know there's it's like reading an essay doing jace's abilities but jace is a god unit um all right now when we look at items if you backline carry jace i wonder if it changes when i move him no it doesn't okay uh these are jace's items honestly if you're playing backline jace these are probably his best items right here alternatively like giant slayer rage blade is good honestly blue buff is pretty good on jace because it makes him insta cast for his team very very strong like it's actually not bad to put mana items on the backline it's a very good static shift user he attacks very fast um all the good stuff if you play in front line you just put tank items on him uh if you end up putting a death cap on him when he's frontlined uh he his shield does scale with ap he's also a very good titans user as well because he has does have decent ap scaling on frontline for the shield and also in backline it scales his attack speed bonus that he gives to his team the ap does so um death cap is low-key a decent item on jace okay cool about jace let's go to jinx Woo, we're almost done 
Hey, Jinx is another, uh, uh, you know, she does a lot of stuff. Uh, she is a rival, as I said before when I talked about rivals earlier. Uh, Jinx um, doesn't necessarily need to have rival, but, you know, Vi really doesn't want to have rival. So you'll always, or, you know, Vi really wants to have rival. Uh, so you typically will always have rival active when you play Jinx. But I could see scenarios where you'd play them both. But uh, anyways, you primarily just play her without her. Um, she's going to be a scrap and a twin shot. But honestly, you don't need any of Jinx's uh, traits to make her viable. Um, but typically, if you want to play her as DPS, you do want to do that. Okay, anyways, she's a DPS and a supportive unit, like low-key a supportive unit. So she does two things. Let me just describe what her ability does. Uh, she needs to gain her mana, obviously, to cast her ability. And what she does is, once she starts to cast, she de so she can't die at... There's a certain point in her cast where she is no longer able to die, but it's... It's ha about halfway through her cast. She rides her rocket into the sky, and then she lands um, in the biggest uh, area of enemies. And it's huge. It's like half the board. And it lights the ground on fire. And it deals magic damage whenever she lands. So it deals magic damage, big AoE, and it lights the ground on fire. So people will start uh, taking a little bit of damage, and their healing will be reduced. Your, your own teammate's healing will be reduced because Jinx is crazy. So your 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 own team will also have healing reduction as well, but they will not take that big AOE like burst whenever she lands. So she has AOE burst with her landing, but once she lands, she'll start um, auto attacking people, and her auto attacks um, have AD damage amp on them. So that's why AD items are also good on her. Good on her, and she fires at random opponents now. So she constantly will change the person she's attacking because again, she's crazy. Um, so that's what she does. And if she has rival bonus, she gains attack speed on takedowns. That's what she does. Okay, so some itemization. Honestly, guys, you can build so many different items on her, but Edge of Night is really good because you can like get her to cast really early in the fight by like frontliner or something. And then Edge of Night would de-aggro and then she would ult and de-aggro again. You know what I'm saying? So she would like get her cast off. Rage Blade's super good. Renan's good. Um, Hodge is really good if she does have dual amp. Uh, Titans is fine. AD amp is fine. Jeweled Gauntlet's a really good item. Like, guys, her build is going to change so much throughout the set. But, like, an Edge of Night and Rage Blade, if you don't know what to do and you build those, those are going to be pretty solid. Uh, but after that, um, you know, really just depends on the patch cycle if you want to build AD, AP. But for the most part, building AD um, or, like, hybrid-esque items like Hodge are going to be pretty good for her. Okay, that is our girl, Jinx. We are almost done. All right, Kai'Sa. We got Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa was probably the best unit, best legendary last set. Uh, so good. Anyway, she is a DPS and low key a supportive unit if you build her a specific way, because she will just like give so much stuff to your team if you if you build a Morello on her. But anyway, she's DPS a supportive unit. Her ability is actually really simple. She deals AP AOE, and so she what she does she fires missiles. It's her Q from League. Um, so she fires missiles and it and it evenly distributes them to the total amount of enemies still alive. That's why she's a really good Morello user because at the beginning of the fight she throws it out and you can apply Morello to every single person on the enemy team pretty much. So she fire, fires those out. And throughout the fight, for every auto attack, she for every time she auto attacks, she she uh she gains more missiles. So every time she auto attacks, her ability will become stronger uh, the next time she casts it. So um so that's why she scales really, really, really well throughout a fight. That's what she does. Her best item is Morello. Such such a good Morello user. Um, very good Edge of Night user uh, because she does kind of like jump into death sometime. After that, it's probably Edge of Night Morello, her best items. And after that, really whatever you want. She mostly scales with AP. So AP amp like Jeweled, Death Cap, Archangel, um, Static Shiv's good item on her. She attacks really, really fast. Um, so she's a really good user of that item. Uh, but yeah, like this build that Mobilitics suggested is fine too. I, I'd probably think Edge of Night's a little bit better. Um, Gunblade's pretty good on her, but yeah, AP items, attack speed amp, Rage Blade, that sort of thing. And then you can build her with like AD esque items like Rudans and stuff like that if you have like Voracious Appetite and you have Dark Star. Actually, pretty decent in that situation. Uh, but really, really, really good uh, Morello user. And sometimes you'll literally just play Kaisa to get to have a good Morello user. Like that's how good of a Morello user she is. TK, oh my God. Okay. Before we even talk about what TK does, TK is a glutton, a mercenary, and a bruiser. He is a tank, and he deals AP damage. He's a tank and a DPS. Yeah. Okay, glutton. I'm not going to read this. What Tom Kinch does is every round you can feed him one unit. Um, so every round you can feed him one unit. 
and he will gain stats from that unit based off of what they are. So if it's a like a bruiser, he will gain health. If it's like, you know, a yeah, if it's an if it's a bodyguard, he will gain armor. If it's an enchanter, uh if it's an enchanter, he'll gain magic resist. And if it's anything else, he'll gain attack dan or AP damage for the most part. Um so he either gains armor, magic resist, health, or ability power. Uh, he scales very well with ability power. And what his ability actually does is uh, he single target. He It's a damage over time single target. What he does is he eats the person that he's attacking. So he eats them. They're in his belly. Lasts about three seconds or so. Um, they take damage over time, and Tom Kinch gets a little bit of damage reduction during that time. If they die in his belly, before he spits them out, if they die, he gains gold, either the gold value of that unit. So if it's a five cost unit, he will gain five gold. Um, your team will gain five gold. Or if they have items equipped to them, he will gain a component from them. Very strong unit, very OP unit, very good. Uh, cool. If he doesn't kill them, then he spits them out to uh, spits them out to the furthest enemy, I believe, and he stuns the target that he spit out. So he spits them out really far away. Um, or I think it's furthest away from him. And, uh, and, and they get micro stunned. They get, or not micro stunned, but they get stunned for a, a very short duration. That's Thomas Kench. That's what he does. Very good. Uh, best items on him. His best assault is Gunblade because he heals while they're in his belly. So good on him. And after that, like tank items are good on him. Blue buff, decent item on him. Archangel's fine on him. Uh, QSS is fine on him. But yeah, it's surely Gunblade plus, Gunblade plus any of those things. Tank, uh, a little bit extra mana. Uh, but primary, if you don't know what to do, just put Gunblade plus tank or or like AP plus tank, something like that, and, and you're good to go. Tom Kench, very good. Uh, you definitely need to learn how to play around Tom Kench at some point in the set because um, he's very like broken in certain circumstances. Okay, Vigar or Vagar, whatever you want to call him. Uh, he is the Yordle Lord. He can own, this unit will not appear in your shops. He will only show up if you have six Yordles um, and you have three starred all of the six Yordles. He will show up from your Yordle portal. Um, he's very, very, very strong at two star, um, and he's okay at three star, or he's okay at one star. And if you get him three star, you win the game. What he does is he just rains hell from above, just little, uh, uh, little poros or something drop from the sky, and they they hit everybody, and they deal a lot of damage, and they they it, it's just he just rains hell from above. You just put AP items on him, and maybe a mana amp. But usually, like the thing about Vigar is you don't really have items to give him, uh, because you. You don't know if you're going to get them and you have to itemize other people and the people you itemize you can't sell because they're already on your board so um, or they are yordles and he is not a yordle he's just a yordle lord anyways just put ap items on him if you ever play vigar and you're good to go pretty simple actually victor 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 does a lot okay victor guys it's the last one he's a chem tech he is an arcanist he is a dps he is ap what does victor do Victor fires lasers everywhere. And so when he casts, when he finally casts, he raises his staff up and little nodes appear all over the map and then lasers come out of them and, and, and they sweep through, sweep through. It does his E from League of Legends. Uh, it does his little laser beam, but it does it from a bunch of different spots on the map because he is a legendary unit. This, this ability can totally whiff. It can totally miss. It usually doesn't, but it can totally just miss everybody. <laughs> he usually doesn't though. Um, and when it, when it hits, it deals a lot of damage. Um, and it also applies shield reduction and armor shred. The reason I applied armor shred before was so that he could be a utility-esque unit. And he was in Chemtech, which pairs very well with Urgot, who needs a lot of armor shred. But Urgot is not in the set anymore, but he still has that utility. So, but that utility is something you don't really think about the armor shred, but sometimes you can think about it. And Victor can be a very decent splash unit if it makes sense for your team. But he is not as splashable as a as a you know as a unit like Silco or or Renata or something like that because he is primarily a carry but does have a little bit of supportiveness with those things. Um, cool. Other thing to note about his laser fire: if he dies while he's channeling, if he dies while he's channeling his ability. Only the amount of nodes that popped up when he was channeling will launch the lasers. So if he casts, a lot of times he'll pop up a bunch of nodes. It'll be like five lasers or something. Sometimes he'll die right when he starts casting. Only one node will pop up. It will only be one laser. See what I mean? Um, cool. Itemizations. His best items are, his best mana gen item is 100% Sojin. It's Sojin. And then after that, a lot. most of the time you build Sojin, Archangel, plus one, either more AP amp 
or more, um, or like Giant Slayer gives you best, better amp uh, or a defensive item. So it's always Sojin um, plus AP amp or, you know, like Giant Slayer or something like that, or maybe one defensive. So just think about it this way. You need mana amp, damage, and plus one. Mana amp, damage, plus one. Woo, that's Victor. How long was this video? This video was really long. Wow. It was an hour and 40, almost two hours. Holy crap. Anyways, hey guys, if you guys watch this whole thing, I appreciate y'all. Um, I tried to make this as informative as possible and um, and also try to get through it. If you guys uh, like the video, please like the video. I put a lot of work into this and um, and that helps me out so much on YouTube. You would not believe how much a like can do on YouTube to uh, to help out your creator. So if you like the video, um, then, then please like the video. And if you guys aren't already subscribed, of course. Um, if you guys want more of me, I got a Twitter. I post every single day um, and I got a Twitch. And I will be streaming a lot more soon. I have a fiber line being installed very soon. It's outside my house right now. They came and dug it in, gets installed in a few days. So I will be back to streaming once I get my fiber line installed. Um, God bless, because um, my ISP has been fisting me. Anyways, uh, that's gonna be it for the video. I appreciate all of you guys. And I just hope you guys have a good day, have a good night, and wherever you are, hope you're doing well. See you guys, bye.